Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to review Starlight. Uh, this episode is late for my patrons, terribly sorry for that, but uh, yesterday I had the worst throat ache in my recent memory. I spent the entire day essentially agonizing and not being able to focus on anything because of my throat. Thankfully, magically, after a good night's sleep and a plethora of medicine, I'm fine. I mean, a little bit hoarse, a little bit coarse, a little bit dry. I feel like I were like I was screaming the entirety of yesterday, but uh, I'm in a shape to record something. So that's at least something, and the show must go on, right? Topical for the anime we're watching. <laughs> um, in the last episode, there wasn't much of a show. Now, the last episode was spent pretty much with uh, Karen and um, with Karen and Hikari, just walking around, talking, looking at jellyfish, and uh, it was a fair bit of downtime. Essentially, it was very much a downtime episode. Uh, after an episode that was fairly exciting and fairly hype, and I'm assuming today's episode might be equally hype and equally exciting. Uh, we now were introduced to some stakes, right? Apparently, if you lose the review, you become a... I don't know, a pariah. <laughs> you completely lose the ability to be any sort of a decent performer or something like that. You lose your drive, you lose your spark, whatever it is. And um, someone pointed out in the comments that I was kind of mistaken the whole time, and it does make sense, um, because the entire time I was under the assumption that um, the whole review is um, essentially... Uh, what am I call it? Uh, for the uh, school play, right? B uh, for Starlight, and uh, if you win, you get the lead leading role in Starlight. But review apparently goes deeper. Review is apparently more. Uh, if you win the review, it doesn't mean that you get the lead role in Starlight. It means that you get the lead role in life, essentially. Uh, you become an overnight star, you become the leading example of what a performer is, you are immediately put on a pedestal and whatnot. So, that does show that stakes are there when it comes to winning, yes, uh, but I still wasn't sure what the stakes were for losing. Because, sure, you can win the review and uh, instantly become a Hollywood superstar or whatever, uh, but if you lose the review, well, it didn't seem like anything was going to happen. But the last episode showed us, or at least told us, uh, through Hikari's um, mouth, I believe. I think it was Hikari who said it. Uh, that if you lose, you lose the most important thing for you as a performer. Which I'm assuming is that kind of a spark that drives you to perform. The sort of je ne sais quoi that makes you a performer, that uh, makes you want to go on stage. That introduces heavy stakes. Uh, because if you lose the review and there's no repercussions for it, you can still work your way to the top, presumably, uh, by your own skill, by your own merit. Instead of being taking the shortcut of being put up, uh, up on the very top by the, by the fucking giraffe, uh, you can work your way to the top by yourself. But if the stakes of uh, losing, if the repercussions for losing is losing that spark that drives you, we are working under heavy stakes for winning and under heavy stakes for losing. So that brings us a little bit more um, tension. Because, um, yeah, because there are stakes both ways. Um, I'm still not sure, not, not quite sure how the bracket works. It seems that uh, even if you lose a fight, you can still fight someone else. 
can you fight the same person again, right? Can uh, can Karen fight Maya again? Can she challenge her again? Or is it just one and done? And uh, the, um, mm, the duel between uh, Karen and Maya just ended with Maya's, Maya winning and that's that. Or how does it look? It's not entirely clear, entirely clear to me quite yet. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what we also kind of learned in the previous episode... What are you doing there? Okay, she's cleaning herself. Yeah, I have a cat on my uh, windowsill. <laughs> um, what was I? What was I talking about? Uh, fuck. What was I talking about? I can't remember. I lost my train of thought. I completely lost my train of thought. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, right, in the last episode we learned of uh, the stakes. Uh, right, yeah, I know, I know what I was, uh, I know what I wanted to talk about. Um, that Karen apparently has the plan to be at the top with uh, Hikari. And uh, that makes me wonder, because she was right that the giraffe never said that only one person can win. If uh, both of them happen to be the best, maybe they both can win. Or, or, can everybody win? Is that a possibility? Because I feel that it might be. I feel that uh, Karen might be that might bring that change to the review, so to speak. Um, I was constantly under uh, under the impression that Karen will be the one who brings a change to the review, but wasn't quite sure what kind of change will it be. I'm assuming the change will be that, for the first time in ever, more than one person will win. Will it be Karen and Hikari? Will it be everybody? That's... I'm not quite sure quite yet. That all remains to be seen. But... And she's no longer on the windowsill. You want down, okay? Just don't, don't touch my phone, please, because it serves as my camera. I don't want you to move it. <laughs> yeah, I still have a little bit of snipples, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, Karen will certainly bring about a change to the review. You can do it, you can jump. Okay, there she is. <laughs> um, yeah, and perhaps in this episode she will bring a little bit more of a change to one more person. Uh, she already changed Juna. Mm, Claudine also kind of sort of changed uh, during her duel with uh, Futaba. Did she duel Futaba? I think it was Futaba. I don't remember. Either Futaba or Kaoruko. I think it was Futaba. Doesn't matter. Claudine had a duel and had, uh, had fun dueling. Essentially, basically. Um, and that makes me wonder if Karen is going to slowly be bringing up a change, bringing about a change in every single person, and eventually everybody will come to a conclusion that, you know what, you, you giraffe, you, fuck you. We are all going to win. You, you're not gonna pit us against each other. We are all winning. We have weapons. We can attack you, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, probably not. Probably not. Uh, I don't think the giraffe is a combatant. Uh, if anything, if everybody suddenly stood up against the giraffe, he'd probably say something like, Subarashi, I was expecting that. You all passed my test. You are all worthy of being the, the stars. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly what would happen. Uh, but we won't know what exactly will happen unless we watch this episode. So let's do just that. Uh, I have my sound. You have your subs. And I need to adjust myself or adjust my camera. So that I have an easier time cutting myself out for the... Um, for the thumbnail. <laughs> okay. Uh, episode 
5 of yeah, episode 5 of Review Starlight with subs by Ripple and uh, it's gonna be starting in it's gonna be starting in 3 2 1 go Starlight 99 Maya and Claudine playing the lead role. Oh, is it gonna be a... Is it gonna be an episode focused on her? It's gonna be a Mahiru focused episode, isn't it? That's Mahiru, right? That's not Kaoruko. Sorry, I'm still getting their names kind of mixed up. Oh, Karen and Hikari aren't there. What was the hazing? Yeah, it's gonna be a Mahiru focused episode, isn't it? Some uh, she's gonna take some issue with Karen being so close with Hikari. Uh, she's gonna be jealous, and there's gonna be some bad blood between them. She's gonna be sad that uh, Karen found herself a new mistress, and she's put on the sidelines and whatnot. I can see where it's going, probably. Might very well surprise me. That will need a lot of training and a lot of conviction. Here's the geometric sparkles again. And she fell in love again. <laughs> yeah, certainly seems like a Mahiro focused episode. Could it be a duel between Karen and Mahiro? It has to happen eventually. What better time for that to happen? than a moment where Mahiru shows some, maybe not quite resentment, but some negative emotions uh, towards Karen, jealousy and whatnot. That's a good opportunity for them to fight out their differences, fight out their issues. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's that's where we're going. I hope that's where we're going. I want to see the two of them fight it out. Earl Grey, Earl Grey with lemon and linden honey instead of sugar. Lemon and honey is the most popular natural cure for a cold. I've consumed more honey and lemon yesterday than for the entirety of the past year. Well, maybe not lemon, but honey, for sure. She's hardworking, yep. Okay. So... She she's actually actively trying to improve herself. Okay. Okay, I like it. <clears throat> she really is changing. She really is trying to improve. 
Yep. But it doesn't sit well with Mahiru. And I was left out of it. Yep. A package? Mm -hmm. Okay, a letter. I thought it was some, I don't know, random invitation to the review or something. Mahiru. Mahiru. And she has her little baton. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, she really is good at twirling her baton. <clears throat> Makes me wonder what her weapon will be during the review. A staff? A quarter staff? She doesn't have aspirations this high. Her being accepted to the school is enough of a success for her. I'm assuming she's not quite this ambitious. Or rather, she never quite thought of her own ambitions. That's the reading I'm getting. And I'm oh so plain. Yep. <laughs> A pang of jealousy? And the memory of her being in Hikari's position. But now things have changed, because Hikari is here. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, shake things up a little. Hmm. Yep. But Banana doesn't want to see them. Th there is the jealousy! 
There's the jealousy. Well, my hero, you better step the fuck up. <laughs> you better start training. Please don't do something creepy. Okay, it's just a hug. She's not sniffing it. <laughs> Beat red? Kinda. Okay. Karen really stepped up. Karen Chan sweat. Just a quick drink and back to practice. Yep. And Mahiru is waiting obediently. If you can head out without me. Oh, she left the bottle that she just drank out of. To, to, to just get a taste. But, but a crumb of her saliva. <laughs> Oh, Hikari! How convenient that she's always there! It is. At least she's very open about it. Is Mahiru gonna get a pep talk from uh, Hikari? Is Hikari gonna have to fight it out with Mahiru? Is that gonna be the jewel of the episode? And it shall be bestowed upon you the star for which you have longed for. Karen? Karen will be bestowed upon one of them? Wakarimas. Karen! Who is she fighting? Mahiru? Okay, so Karen is fighting Mahiru. And Mahiru has a mace. I was kind of expecting a quarter staff, but I guess a mace also makes sense. Review of Jealousy. Yep, yep, yep. Makes sense. <laughs> and now she's sparkling. Would you look at that? Oh, 
Oh. Oh. My yonder senses are tingling. <laughs> She's not fucking around. That's for sure. Ah, uh, I love it. What? <laughs> What's even going on? And now Maya is fighting Futaba? And they just intruded on their stage, what? Bit of a scenery use. Another duo that they will intrude upon, yep. Another scene. Hmm, Hikari versus Claudine. Fighting it out on the top of a roof. Not even to you. Trapdoors. Okay, back into their own stage, I'm assuming. Yep. Backstage fight. Is anything really backstage here, though? Mm. Outside observers would disagree with you. I mean, you got to this school on your own merit, so... It's not like you're completely lacking talent and skill, right? Yeah. I mean, even at the beginning of the fight, she was literally spreading the glimmer that she she's seen the glimmer coming from other people, but at the beginning she was emitting her radiance herself. Spotlights? No, no spotlights. Just some glitter. And now they can fight in earnest. Are we playing baseball now? No position zero?
Karen Klein the spot. Okay. So Makiru did lose. But she also gained something from that pep talk. She gained some confidence. Yet again, a fight with Karen changes Karen's opponent for the better. First it was Junna, now it's Mahiru. That's a lot of potato dishes. Mahiru potatoes. <laughs> Yep, she has a goal, she does want to be a star, but she forgot about it. Karen helped her remember that she has goals, she has ambitions, and she can work towards them. Hmm. There's an interesting parallel to, like, an overachiever kid who's finally put in a place where everybody is, like, on their level. I love her, yes, but I don't need to be dependent on her. I have my own glimmer, I have my own shine, I can stand by my own merit. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. That felt like absolutely no time at all, holy shit. Another great episode, what else can I say? Besides that, if you want to see the next one right now, head over to my Patreon, because it will already be there. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I have to try and start shilling early, because uh, from what I see in my like YouTube analytics, nobody really watches the my outros and whatnot, so I have to shill my stuff early. Uh, join my Discord, too, there's a link here. <laughs> And subscribe and like and leave a comment down below. What did you think of this episode? Just don't spoil me anything, please. That's probably the thing that I have to start talking about early. Instead of uh, at the very end uh, to just not spoil anything. And here's Mahiru in a spotlight. Next time, two flowers on the stage. Two flowers. Whose names are flower-based? <laughs> I don't see any, any obvious flower-based names. So, uh, I'm not gonna try to make predictions. I guess all that's left is for us to go through this episode again. So let's do just that, shall we? Okay, let's roll. Uh, Mahiru on the backstage? Or was she? Yeah, both of them were on the backstage. And talking and... Will he always be with me? Yes, always. But now... Karen... Actually tries to work. Karen, Karen actually tries to put effort into her goal.
and now Mahiru is left behind. It's a very interesting dynamic and a very interesting change from uh, two standpoints, right? First is that um, often you see a very idealistic uh, main character, a very idealistic protagonist, the kind that Karen is, where they win despite them not really trying, not really putting effort, right? They are either able to talk their way out of every situation or they have enough luck or um, they are able to, they, I don't know, they uh, emit some shine that blinds their opponent and they use the moment to strike them down or, you know, some kind of bullshit reason. Or perhaps um, the uh, sloppiness and the carefreeness of the main character of the protagonist is shown as uh, their um, mm, as a benefit, as something that really serves them well, because something, because they are having fun doing what they're doing, and their opponents aren't, uh, and thus it's the protagonist who truly understands the nature of whatever it is that they're doing or whatever, right? That's why I like it here that um, it really brought a change to Karen. Karen really did change for the better, quote-unquote. Uh, she really started putting effort, a lot of effort. She wakes up even before Mahiru, she goes to the uh, practice early, she stays practicing late, she's making uh, she's making an uh, she's making an effort, uh, trying to stay awake during her classes, right? And she puts a lot of effort. I like it. That's the first change I like, and the other, uh, very not obvious change, but obvious thanks to this episode. Uh, but again, this episode didn't quite make it like fully in your face, at least not until. Uh, fairly late in the episode. Mm. Mahiru, all this time, she was taking care of Karen, right? Mahiru was the one who to wake Karen up. Now Karen wakes herself up. Uh, Mahiru was the one to wake up Karen during um, classes so that she doesn't fall asleep. Now, Karen just stays awake. Uh, Makiru was probably the one who had to drag Karen to practice so that she has enough, uh, I don't know, merit points or whatever. Now, Karen just willingly goes to practice and willingly, willingly does overtime. Where does that leave Makiru? She kind of defined herself through Karen. She defined herself as Karen's caretaker. But now Karen doesn't need that sort of care. So that leaves Mahiru fairly aimless, right? And empty, because the thing she defined herself through is no longer there. She's no longer needed in the role that was the only role she she saw herself as. Kinda... Mm, Yeah, Mahiru is kind of uh, like a parent whose children, whose child is now of age and is planning to move out or even is moved out, and the parent and the parent doesn't know what to do with themselves. Right? They are now they now have so much free time. They no longer have to care for their child. They now have so much money, they no longer have to give their kid that money. They now have so much space in their home because the kid isn't taking that space. And they find themselves at a loss. And then they adopt like 50 cats or something. <laughs> and that's basically Mahiru. But thankfully later she was reminded of her own goals. And that means yet another positive change for um, for Karen's opponent. I wonder if it's really gonna become a running theme. Legendary hazing. Kinda disappointed they didn't show us that legendary hazing. Oh. 
And would you look at that? They are already here and they are already training. They are already practicing. And would you look at that? Karen has been at least partially acknowledged by Maya. Right? Because Karen is now putting an effort. Because all this time before, Maya didn't... I'm assuming Maya didn't really have much respect for Karen, because Karen was just a lazy bum who was just trying to get decent enough grades to graduate and didn't have any ambitions besides that. Or maybe had ambitions, but also very um, arrogant ambitions. Believe that she will win despite not putting any effort into it. Now Karen is putting effort into it. And that gets Maya's recognition. And look at that. Karen is sparkling. That sparkle is very, very literal, gotta say. And yeah, Karen is putting an effort. Let me try again. She's staying awake during lessons. She's going for a run after school. Yeah, she's practicing on her own. And it seems like she's not in the showers because she's probably still, still practicing. Mahil potatoes. Uh, what did it say? Packed with good stuff TV, Mahiru's appearance. Yep. And here she is, by the encouragement of her musical and play-loving grandmother. And now she pulled off the amazing feat of being accepted at that school. Yeah. And look at all the rewards she has. Not just she has, she's earned. That's an important distinction. She earned... Every single one of those. Every single one of those is her achievement. Her and only her. She earned all of that through her own merit. And uh, she's applying to that school, sure, on her grandmother's behest, but the fact that she was accepted is only her own doing. Except she forgot about it. Except she forgot about it. <clears throat> also, uh, one thing I gotta mention. Uh, the blush. Everybody blushes, like, at all times. I think I, should, I shouldn't be putting uh, this much weight into characters blushing. Right? Usually it's a signal that there is a crash or there is something going on, but in a review it seems like a slight blush is like the default state of everybody, so I probably shouldn't be looking too much into it. And they are all shining, but I can't see my own shine. And she sees herself instead of Hikari. But it's not her, it's Hikari. Hmm. Those two were perfectly in sync. I could really picture those two as the leads. Uh, why does Banana want Claudine and Maya to be the leads again? I'm not quite sure. Is it just that she wants to keep the status quo? That she's not feeling like experimenting? I don't know, I'm not sure. It probably has some significance. It probably does. And uh, it will probably come to light in a banana-focused episode. I'm assuming we're gonna get one. 
Uh, but as of yet, as of right now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why Banana decided to move to the backstage work, and I'm not sure why she wants to keep status quo. You'd better learn to always attempt something new. Yeah. Bad dream. Wait, Karen-chan, don't handhold her, you'll get her pregnant, I want to carry your babies. Yeah, the little pillow moment, and uh, of course, inconvenient Hikari. Hmm. I was wondering if uh, Hikari always being there when Mahiru does this stuff is actually any any significant but i'm not sure i'm not sure it is i don't think it is i think it's just mostly for comedic effect and karen is again doing her best oh karen chan sweat if i could just squeeze it out into a cup <laughs> chinese medicine caramel milk uh, looking forward to the potatoes. And oh, Karen Chan's lips touched it. There is still a glimmer of her saliva on the rim of the bottle. And she spills out her guts. I don't have anything. I only have Karen. Hmm. Karen Chan is all I have. Don't take her. Don't steal my Glimmer. But you have your own. Just don't see it. And use the word steal lightly. And we're getting an invitation to the review. And it shall be bestowed upon you the star which you have longed for. And the giraffe is drinking from a pool with, like, money in it, and someone's throwing money into it. I mean, you throw money into a well or a fountain for good luck and uh, for your wish to be granted, so I guess that's what he drinks from. Kinda disappointed we didn't get a henshin, uh, but then again, if uh, both um, if both Karen and uh, Mahiru were to get their own henshins, it would take like half an episode, so I understand that there wasn't enough time for that. I love the shining stage, but I love seeing you shine even more. Tsuzuyaki Mahiru. The review of Jealousy. A little bit of a play. This is what I want, but cannot have. You light me up with your glimmer. Miracle Pitch of Love Review of Jealousy. And she has a maze. Of course she does. And she's running after Karen like a, like she was born a yandere. Don't look that way. At least let me play. Won't you look straight at me and no one else? Please stay just like you are forever. I want to keep you in a jar of formalin. <laughs> keep you forever with me. I have no clue what this is. BSO. Blue, yellow, red lights that are switching when they are invading other scenes. Hudaba is fighting with Maya. And there's the UFO cat that's splitting the stage into two. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah. Swing and a miss doesn't mean the game is over. Uh, a lot of... Yeah, a lot of, like, uh, baseball symbolism. Which sounds super weird once you say it out loud. Baseball symbolism, but that's essentially what it is. If those cats are playing baseball, 
Karen is a ball, Mahiru uses her mace like a baseball bat, then later they are shown uh, on, like, baseball bases. I'm assuming this also is something like baseball-ish? Bat strike out or something? I'm not sure. I, I have absolutely no clue about what the rules of baseball are. Uh, Jumna is fighting Kaoruko. Second strike, maybe. Hikari is fighting Claudine. Let me take care of you again. Yeah, that's that's what it was all all about. I define myself through the through the lens of taking care of you. Now you don't need to be taken care of. And I have no clue what to do about myself. Uh -huh. Let me take, yeah, let me take care of you again. The promise I made with Hikari-chan, I can't lose to anyone, not even to you. They're back on the stage. When I close my eyes, it's all set in motion. I'm being reborn, round and round on the stage. Uh, we'll go all out and fight. We've never done something like this before. True. True, they've never. I don't think they ever, like, argued in earnest. It's because I made a promise again. True, she made a promise to Hikari. And uh, that's... Precisely why they are fighting. What promise and with who? Will disappear along the light of day. Without you, I lose everything I have. And here's the basket of glimmer. Don't make this game end. And here's the pep talk. You say you don't have anything. You have your own glimmer. You have your own shine. That's a non non. You're shining. Just can't see it. You came here because you have something you want to be, right? But you forgot. So let me remind you that you have your own goals, your own aspirations. And you ev and everything you achieved was your own doing. And now we can fight, but for fun, not to fight out our differences. Yeah, more baseball. And Mahiru lost, of course. No position zero. Potatoes, a lot of potatoes. Potato salad, baked potatoes, potato stew. Another kind of baked potato, I'm assuming, or some potato croquettes. Uh, singular French fries, mashed potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. That's a lot of carbs. That's a lot of carbs. Mahiru potatoes. And yeah, she has her own glimmer. She does want to become a star. She wants to become the kind of star, the kind of warm star that makes people smile. And you are already radiant. I went and lost confidence and became a coward all on my own. Yes. I will. Okay, you will. So like I left my loneliness behind, please look this way or fly me to the star. Please notice me or fly me to the star. Next time, two flowers on the stage. Uh, the story of Mahiru is, uh, I have a feeling, also kind of a story of... Um, okay, maybe... Uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I no longer need any visual aid. Uh, the story of Mahiru is, uh, I feel, a story of an uh, overachiever kid. 
but the kind of an overachiever who was never really faced with any challenges. Right? Kinda, sorta. Well, okay, maybe not wasn't faced with any challenges, but was in an environment where their achievements were truly something uh, unprecedented, right? She was brought up on a farm in some small town community, and uh, that's why her winning all those rewards and whatnot made her special. None of her peers were anywhere near close, essentially. But then she arrived at the academy, and everybody is like her. Everybody there was winning all sorts of rewards. Everybody there has a great pedigree. Everybody, everybody there achieved all that she achieved, and perhaps even more. She's no longer special among, their pe among her peers. That's why she lost a lot of confidence in herself. And uh, I can empathize with that, because I was exactly this kind of a kid. I had the exact same thing happen to me, essentially, uh, when I was in um, primary school and, in, and uh, in junior high. I was the overachiever. I would take part in every single school play. I would be the announcer for every single school event. I would take part in every single competition on uh, like school level or inter-school competition, even like uh, countrywide things. I would take part in it and I would win all of those or rather most of those, right? I always had great grades, the best one of the best grades in the entire school, genuinely. I'm not, like, you know, trying to brag or anything, because it was it wasn't a big school, it was, like, a little town school, so, right, it makes sense that uh, you know, there wouldn't be that... Or, okay, yeah, I, I just was one of the best, S simply speaking, <laughs> but it wasn't a school that had, like, I don't know, some super great level, because it was one school for, like, a certain group of cities. I don't know how it's called. The, um, kind of like a district thing in English. Gmina in Polish. So go ahead and translate it yourselves. A group of cities. A group of towns and villages, essentially. So uh, it's not like they could have a school for regular people, a school for great people. So everybody was just in a single school. And then uh, for high school, I went to a school that had uh, a high level. And it was full of kids like me. Uh, I wasn't, I was no longer the only overachiever. Everybody was an overachiever. And I was on the lower spectrum of those overachievers. And that shattered my confidence for the longest time, honestly. And, uh, yeah, that's basically what happened to Mahiru. That's basically what happened to her. So I, I can fully empathize with that. I can genuinely fully empathize. But she was reminded by Karen that every single one of her achievements was an achievement of her own, regardless. It's not like they could be taken away from her. It's not like they suddenly no longer matter. They still do. She is still a shining star. She still has that glimmer of her own. She never lost it. She nearly forgot that she has it. Because she was so focused looking at others that she never... That she stopped noticing herself. Kind of, sort of deal. And yet again, we have Karen's opponent, who's um, who comes out better out of a duel with Karen. It wasn't the case with Maya. Pretty much that was like the only case so far, where the status quo remained the same. Except I guess Karen came out better for it, because she started putting an effort and uh, uh, pulling her own weight. But uh, when Karen fought Junna, Junna... When Juna ended up better for it, uh, when Karen fought Mahiru, Mahiru ended up better for it. Uh, 
I guess I'm gonna need one more sample size to fully, uh, <laughs> fully be convinced that this is the um, the running theme. But so far, it would seem this way. It's only episode five, so uh, we're not even like halfway through. So I can't really speak of patterns particularly much, but we'll see. We'll see what happens further. We'll see. Hmm. I honestly thought that it's going to be Mahiru who will fight her differences out with Hikari. And uh, it will be Hikari who puts some sense in Mahiru's head. But no, a fight with a fight of Mahiru versus Karen also works. Also works perhaps even better uh, than uh, Mahiru versus Hikari would. Hmm. Also, an interesting thing I just noticed when uh, looking at the list of characters I have. Uh, with Hikari, there are now nine people. Not, no longer eight. They no longer form pairs. Someone will have to be left behind. As far as couples go. Interesting. I don't know if it's gonna have some significance. I don't know if uh, it's gonna have some bearing on the story and on the characters and whatnot, but... An interesting observation. And uh, I don't think that's... I think... I actually do think that's gonna be it. So uh, now, you guys, you tell me down in the comments what did you think of this episode, my reaction, of my theories. Uh, just leave it all spoiler-free, please. I want to experience it myself completely, completely blind. Uh, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. But tell me why so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases and not only review Starlight, but also... Shield Hero Season 2, uh, Simifo Gear G, Spy X Family, uh, Virgin Road, and um, Skeleton Knight in Another World. If you're interested in any of those, uh, head over to my channel. Some of them will be in the cards in the corner, so you might want to check them out. And uh, if you want to be notified of those releases, and if you want to see some of those releases, I'm talking about non-seasonal shows, uh, you can subscribe to my Patreon for 10 bucks a month to get early access to Simifugirji and Review Starlight. Uh, everything else, every seasonal, is just put straight on YouTube. And for just a dollar, you get um, a role on my Discord server, and you get a shout-out in the credits of my videos, and uh, you get an orange name on my server. And that's essentially it. Here's my server. You can join it. It's open to everybody. You don't need to be a Patreon uh, to join and talk about anime and talk about manga and talk about memes and food and stuff like that. Anything else? Share this video. Of course, as always, the more you spread the word about my videos, about my content, uh, the more YouTube itself promotes it, and uh, the more people see it, the more those people will spread the word, and uh, my channel will eventually see an exponential growth. I still believe. I still believe. And uh, there's nothing better for a content creator than to see their content being seen by others. So uh, do me a solid and share the word. And uh, I think that's gonna be it for me for today. So as always, do all the good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers. And here's the credits I mentioned. Don't let the text fool you. You don't need 10 bucks a month to be here. Just a dollar is enough. <laughs>